Welcome to the overview of my 1999 Pontiac Trans Am 30th Anniversary Edition. This car is number 1321. It's one of 100 coupes of its kind for the Canadian market and they made 1600 total for the North American market. This car is a tribute to the 1969 Trans Am with the white paint and the dual blue stripes. It's the last ever numbered car Pontiac ever produced. And this one has about 45,000 kilometers on it. And right now the year is 2020. The car has spent its whole life in Alberta, starting at Cold Lake Air Force Base, where an Air Force officer owns a car followed by a collector six months later in Calgary, and then myself, John Molberg, from the end of 2000 till now and possibly beyond. A couple things to note on the exterior. Well, I have a few bugs on the front here. The car was recently detailed. Uh, there are only three blemishes on the whole car. Just one small scratch. Well. Right here, a small chip right there. There is a small scratch here, also on the hood, and then the final one is on the rear fin. Find it? You're standing right in front of it. Right there, yeah. Other than that, there are no blemishes on the exterior of the car, and each one of those has a story that I could tell you if you wanted to know. The side of the car has what's called the feathers. So this is actually part of the 30th anniversary Daytona 500 pace car package. And I'll show you a picture of what those look like here. Uh, I thought that looked a little garish, so I instead decided to accent with just the blue Trans Am lettering on the side, the feathers, and also in the back, infill of the Pontiac lettering. Other than that, the only way that you can distinguish anything from factory on this car are the rear exhaust tips, which are a B&B &B tri-flow stainless steel exhaust system, and the fact that the car is lowered by one inch, all of which could easily be undone. I've also opted to polish the calipers on the outside, although the brackets for the calipers could certainly use uh, a touch-up. The wheels on the 30th anniversary Trans Am were special. They are actually a clear coat blue, uh, mimicking the other 99 wheels with the 30th anniversary hubcap in the center. Uh, these are the original wheels on the car. They've never been damaged or replaced. The tires on the car are a Nitto, and they're about four years old. It's only the second set of tires I've had on the car, seeing as it has 45,000 kilometers. So one of the more notable parts of this car is what I've done under the hood. You'll notice the Davenport Motorsports sticker on the top. It's been there for at least 15 years. And it's because Davenport Motorsports supercharged this car in around 2003. Yeah, pull it. Good job. So you also note the Ram air system on the car. Uh, I slightly enhanced this by removing the baffles inside the Rams. And anyone who knows the F-bodies of this generation will know that this Ram air system had the Camaros slightly faster, or pardon me, slightly slower than the Trans Ams. So these are the enhancements made in the engine bay. There's a Vortec G-Trim supercharger with intercooler system. The radiator for the intercooler is down in the front. Can't really be seen from here. Have it on the front. Uh, other things that you can't see, the valve train has been upgraded on this car to include uh, all titanium components. Uh, raising the rev limiter of this car to 6,800 RPM, which with the centrifugal blower will make about 493 rear wheel horsepower, 460 rear wheel torque. Also upgraded to a spec stage three clutch to handle all of that horsepower. On the suspension side, uh, there's a gentleman named Sam Strano 
who was a legend in racing the F-bodies in autocross and road coursing. He designed his own suspension components, including sway bars, which I put on this car front and rear, along with Kony shock absorbers, which were uh, the best of the best. So this car is designed to handle, as well as designed to be fast. The best I've got out of this car in a quarter mile is 12 seconds flat at 115 miles an hour. Although I'm up at about a density altitude of 4,000 feet, so this car would easily be an 11 second car at sea level. Although it has not raced in a long, long time. Next we'll take a look at the inside of the car. How much horsepower? Oh, 500? 500? Yeah. Uh, V8. One of the things I notice about this car is kids everywhere can't help but squeal and get excited when they see it. That's what just happened there. So the interior is pretty much factory. Um, the only real change is the anodized blue shifter knob and the addition of what you can see down here is the speakers and the kick panels. So these speakers are MB Quart 4 inch speakers. Um, I'm not gonna lie, they're past their prime. They're about as old as the car. And the stereo in this car is designed, and these speaker replacements were designed to get a perfect sound stage for the front of the car. So car audio used to be a passion of mine, so I put a lot of effort into the placement of the speakers. If you didn't like these, you could easily just stick with the six inches in the door on the tweeter. I do have a six inch in there right now. MB Quart, there's nothing in here right now anniversary components. First thing is the headrests, 30th anniversary headrests on both sides. These are original. Leather is also original. And Jack is also original. Mm. <laughs> yeah. The stereo is about as old as the car as well. It's a clarion unit, completely functional. It also has a separate equalizer. And down here is what a lot of people will look for, the 1321 nameplate, as this marks the last time Pontiac in history ever numbered a car. This car is number 1321. And this opens. And that opens. It's for the things called compact discs that you've probably never heard of. One of the things that I take pride in is every time I insert the key, I look where it's going, so there's no scratches around there. Where are we going? No, we're just firing it up to show that the car has 45,000 kilometers on it, original. And not a whole lot of gas. All right, moving towards the back of the car, I'm gonna overview the stereo in the rear. So this was a custom-built stereo system. First thing you'll notice is you can't see anything. Right off the bat. There are three 12 inch jail audio 12W6 sensors in the back that are hidden uh, with the grills just placed on there that I had custom made. There they are there. This is designed <coughs> that it can be removed or pivoted forward. See the amplifiers. This is a MTX 4320 Thunder amplifier made in the United States. This one's a 2300. Uh, these amplifiers are some of my favorite parts of the entire car. Uh, this one is 900 watts driving the subwoofers. This one's up to 600 watts, although it's not running nearly that aggressively. And under here, you can see some of the circuitry and the Why wiring yeah. as well. Yeah, that's right. You me smart. Yeah. One other point about the stereo system, it's all designed to be completely removed. The subbox can be removed if you want to lighten the load. Uh, the car can also be completely returned back to the stock configuration back here. All the original speakers are still with the car. And one other note behind each of these exists an MB Court crossover. Wire. Yeah, more wires. That is the overview of the stereo system. Uh, if you care about how loud it is, it did hit 146 decibels once upon a time. Honestly, if it were me, I would downgrade the stereo system to something a little more conservative. But for 
for now. That is what it is, and it's a lot of fun. The engine does seep a slight bit of oil, which can sometimes collect on the exhaust headers. And you create a little bit of smell if you don't drive it very much, which I don't. In fact, I've only put about two to three thousand kilometers on in the past five years. So one of the more interesting innovations is I made it so that we can still utilize the T-roof holders. Pull the roof out, it sits on these two metal brackets. I'll just do one for now, but the lid actually slightly presses it down such that it'll prevent any vibrations if you turn the stereo up. You won't even know that they're there. So stock the car at a 0 to 60 time about 5.3 seconds. Substantially faster than that now. Another note, the car comes with uh, an owner's manual uh, as well as a special folio talking about the 30th anniversary Trans Am. Some specs also comes with the 30th anniversary Trans Am pen and tire pressure checker. So there you go.